Welcome in YouTube peeps. So I do read a lot of the comments on my videos. Anytime I do a single player for player seven difficulty, I always get some of those comments. Well, hey bro, I play online and when I'm farming solo, I never get all these sick drops that you get. There's a multitude of reasons for that, whether I have absolutely amazing perfect gear with like 800% magic find on single player, but also you are correct in identifying that I do run a lot of it on player seven because then I will get the best drops and who doesn't want to get the best drops? But also, when I do some of the highlight videos online, I do run them on just the player's one difficulty. I'm in a game just solo by myself. Now, today I'm bringing you a list from my experience and from my knowledge of the best places to farm when you're running solo online on Battle.net. Now, if you get anything out of this video, make sure you hit that like button. And if you're new and you haven't subscribed up yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well. All right, guys, let's get after it. Alrighty, so I'm not necessarily going to go from best to worst. What I'm going to do is go kind of from the beginning of the game till the end of the game and get after all of my favorite places to farm solo online. But I'm going to start off with the first half or the first section of this video, going with places that are either static maps or areas that are absolutely incredibly easy to read the maps on. Now, the first place I'm going to go to is the Black Marsh, and we're going to go to the Forgotten Tower. Now, this is single player, the maps revealed. But this will show you uh, exactly how you can read the map because it's all it's all going to be revealed. I can show you now the tower there in the Black Marsh. You just got to teleport around in order to find it. Generally, you're going to want to do this with a sorceress because that is the absolute easiest. Now, when you get into the Forgotten Tower, this is an abnormal map. Usually, all you have to do is go left every time. But here, this is actually one of the weird maps where it's a triple right and you get to down to the next level. See, here is a better example. You see the little map up in the corner. You come up and just go left. Imagine if you did not know the go left trick and you got, went straight here, you went right. You could be running around, teleporting around over here for who knows how long, just wasting a ton of time. We'll go ahead and get down to the next level here and you see, bam, the exact same example, pretty much the next level. This is how it is a majority of the time, to be honest. If you went right or straight, you would be lost. If you went left, you go directly down to the next area. This one's slightly longer, but it's the same thing. You just turn to the left and boom, I'm already down to the bottom. Even if the maps weren't revealed for being single player, you just turn left and four out of five times minimum, probably more like nine out of 10, you're gonna be right. Now you can come over here and you see the Countess over here. They're all immune to cold. You wanna watch out for that. And the Countess is immune to fire and cold. Now apparently the infinity will break the fire on the Countess here. But you notice they are all immune to cold, so you cannot do these necessarily with a blizzard sorceress. If you're doing like something like the firewall orb sorceress now, you could go ahead and do that. And that will apparently break the countess immunities. And also your mercenary can take down the countess quite quick. See, this is on players one on hell difficulty, and my mercenary one-shotted the countess right there. So it is that easy. There's the first place I'm going with, farm the countess. All right, for the next one, that's either gonna be easy to read where to go to find where to magic find or is static, we're going to the outer cloister and we're gonna be running the pits. Now for the pits, all you do is come to this outer cloister and you just leave the monastery here and there is a path. All you do is follow the path. The path will either lead back to the next area or the other path will lead to the pits. Now you come out here, still going, still going. Where does it branch off? Uh, this one actually went right out to the exit so we got to find where that branched off at and it actually branched off real close up here and it comes down to the pits right over here see i missed the little side thing because I, I wasn't looking i was trying to talk but there's the pits down here and the pits is an incredibly easy area it's really good for things like the pit necro for a poison necro because there's almost essentially no poison immunes down here cold is not going to be the best but um, this is what I'm just doing this for the example for the video, but the pits is pretty weak area. It's a level 85 area, so you can find any item in the game. The monster density is so-so, but because it's so easy, it's so early on in the game, that's what makes this an incredibly good spot to farm here in Diablo 2 Resurrected. And not to mention, it's incredibly easy to find. Like I said, you just follow the path from the outer cloister back to the pits. Now for the next place, this is a, an actually a completely static map that's going to be good to farm. And this one's going to go all the way to Act 3. We're skipping Act 2, but head out to Trav, and we're farming the Council. Now the Council, council is known for high runes and for jewelry, 
and you can run this on players one difficulty or players eight it's or seven or eight it's going to be better on the higher difficulty settings but it's still perfectly fine to run on players one you can still find a lot of good items out here it is kind of difficult make sure your resistances are up this character i have right here the resistances are not particularly up but they're known for dropping a ton of gold you can find rares and unique uniques from out here at the council and like i said Jewelry and high runes are kind of what you're known for. A dole is not necessarily high, but that's an example of finding runes from out here. Um, you could ID some of those rares and make sure you get something good, but I'm not going to do that for here. So yeah, don't forget to run the council. Now the next area is going to be skipping Act 4 and jumping to Act 5. And it's going to be another static map that always has these champions right there. And that's going to be the Frigid Highlands. You're going to be running Shank and Eldritch down here. So first, you usually come up to do Eldritch, and this is a terrible character to do this with, because they're immune to cold. So I'm just showing you right here, Eldritch and his pack are up here, and then down here is Shank's pack. They're also immune to cold, so the Blizzard Sorceress is absolutely terrible for this. But you can see uh, Shank the Overseer in the middle there, and the thing is, when you kill Shank the Overseer, Meteors will rain down, killing all these monsters around in this area. So if you don't quite kill everything, if you go to... Uh, shank and kill him really quickly You can then just teleport around waiting for the meteors to drop and it'll kill everything and you can even get drops From that and not to mention when you do kill Eldritch make sure you check over here if these monsters drop dead for a certain radius I've actually found nothing crazy, but I have found ist runes um runes stuff like that drop from some of the other things Theoretically you could be dropping a zod rune off of one of those monsters over there So the next one that's completely static map there Don't forget to farm shank and Eldritch all right, the next one we're going to jump to after Shank and Eldritch is actually going to be one that a lot of people do not do, but that's going to the Arius Plateau, and that is farming Thresh Shocket. Now, Thresh Shocket is almost the same as the next monster we're going to talk about farming, Pindle, but there's just a couple of items that Pindle can drop that Thresh Shocket cannot, but it's so incredibly easy, that's why you should do it. Now, you can see on my little mini map in the upper corner, he's going to be right next to this little cave entrance which on my particular map is right here. He's immune to cold. So this character, once again, is not particularly great for it, but if you can farm this with any character, get a tally staff and just uh, keep re replenishing the charges on that, you'll be good to go. Now, hypothetically speaking, this waypoint could be way down here. Now, let's say the waypoint is right here. You come through the waypoint and you don't know where to go. When you come out here, it's either gonna be up to the left or up to the right. That's the only two options for the direction. So you pick one. Let's say you run into the wall. You went up to the right, ran into the wall, then you know for a fact it's gonna be up to the left. There's no other option. Also, another thing that can be telling, if you're going around, if you do see any stairs, let's see if I can find any stairs around this joint. Uh, it's not looking like it, but if you teleport this way up past some of these walls, that's gonna be telling. You see these, uh, kind of ramps I guess you call it where there's a change in elevation that's telling you that it's in that direction because you're constantly going up the hill technically is the way it's supposed to seem so if you find any uh, increases in elevation if you ever see any stairs you see there's stairs going up to this bridge to go into there any stairs anywhere will always face the direction that you need to go so it is kind of that easy to read you come through here uh, you know you come through say the waypoint you look for, you teleport one way, run into the wall, you go the other way. So really, it is incredibly quick to farm. It is super, super fast there. And we'll go ahead and I'll show you just how quick you can run this. Because I feel like it's mega, mega slept on. It's super, super easy. Because you can literally, if you have a sorceress, you can spawn in here, take four steps, telekinesis the waypoint, and bam, you could be killing Thresh Shocket that fast. Thresh Shocket can literally be two or three times faster than running Pindle, which is the next one that we're going to do here. So don't sleep on Thresh Shocket. Now, I feel like we don't even need to pause. I'm just going to roll right into the next one. And that's because you can run all the way down here and come into this portal and farm Pindle. Now, Pindle, obviously, this is one of those ones where you could get more uh, stuff from the minions around Pindle. But on players one difficulty, it's not a problem to farm strictly Pindle because this champion the super uniques always drop the same number of items. You have the same number of chance. It doesn't matter on player difficulty for the elite champions and the super uniques and stuff like that. So it's super quick. And this one, I'm not gonna linger on too long because everyone, everyone, everyone knows about running Pendle. But um, 
Pindle's portal down here after you rescue Anya. Just go through there, farm Pindle. That's one that you probably want to add on to the end or the beginning or whatever you want to call it of every Magic Find run you do. All right, now we're going to jump back to the beginning here, and I'm going to go through the ones that are not static maps, but they're definitely still worth farming. Now, the first one is Andario. The drop odds for Andario on Players 1 difficulty are significantly less than they are on like Player 7 difficulty, but Andario's pretty weak. She has a weakness to fire, which is noteworthy, but um, farming Andario can be super quick and can be super easy. Now you've seen the way that I came from this waypoint. The very first going from the waypoint, you just go out from that tile, which would be where you're at. You can go this way and then just turn right. All, just go right as much as you can. And you see that's where this particular map is. You turn right and it's right there. Now for the next level, I personally am not aware of a perfect way to do it. This one right here is you come out and turn left. But as far as I'm aware, that's not necessarily always the case. So this one can take you a little bit longer. That's why I say it's not a completely static map all the time. Now, once you get down here, this map is always static. If you are not a, a sorceress, you have to come down and run through this door and come through here. But uh, Andario can be farmed with any, uh, any type of build at all. You can take out Andario pretty easy. If you have a good Blizzard Sorcerer's Blizzard's kind of the way to go. Firewall's been wrecking, but I heard that they might have put a patch on that. I cannot confirm that yet. But Andario, like I said, not quite static, but even though player seven is players one, Andario is still another place that is good to farm solo online. The next place is one of my favorites and one of the better places to farm solo online. Once again, the same as uh, Andaro. We're going to skip Act 2 for this particular one. And we're going to go to the Durance of Hate Level 3 and farm Mephisto. Now, for Mephisto, you kind of, when you come through this waypoint, you want to go to the left. Now, for this one, you're going to end up, if you run out here, you're going to end up running out here and then going way left like that. But if you're a sorceress, you could kind of come out and notice, oh, I can go across. You always want to go as left as possible. And that's going to be generally be the way down to the next level. Now for this one, it's you're going to have to go left and then come back around. This is a huge map in hell, obviously. Because if you went right, we'll head over here and show you. The map is just huge. And you'd go way over here for absolutely no reason. It is just massive. But if you went left, it would actually end up being the fastest way. Even though for this particular example, it's not particularly super fast. Once you get down to the next level, this is farming uh, Mephisto. You can kill the council if you want to. The council can definitely drop some good items, but they can be pretty tough. And their uh, attacks and, and some of the immunities that they have actually can make them tougher than Mephisto. Now, if you want to, a lot of people know about Motric and Mephisto. Come over here and you can just cast away and take out Mephisto. Or if you're strong enough, you can just come over here and wreck Mephisto like this. Once again, like I said, Mephisto is just like Andar, where it players, the highest player difficulty will benefit the drops, but Mephisto is still good for farming on Players 1 difficulty, even though not as good as Player 7. I always recommend hit the Super Chest back here. It might just be me, maybe I got lucky, but I've definitely pulled a Burr Rune out of that chest before, so that's why I always recommend to hit that chest too, and then go through that portal when you're done. Now I am going to go over another place in Act 2. I'm going to actually go back and get this one. But it is the Ancient Tunnels in Act 2. Um, this, once again, these are going to be slightly better if you do them on Player 7 difficulty. But really, if you're hunting the Champions boss packs, it's going to be the same. But on the highest player difficulty, then you can find runes. But if you're strictly um, mainly focusing or, you know, you're hoping to find high level uniques, players one difficulty is still going to be good down here, but I usually wouldn't waste my time on the re regular monsters. I would just come around here. These guys are running real fast. So I know there's a champion over here. I took out the champion. I could identify a jewel right now. I'm not going to worry about it, but when you're farming champions, boss packs, only take out the champions and boss packs. Now you're coming around here. There's just a ton, a ton, a ton of champions. There's a champion and boss pack right next to each other. Here's regular monsters. I'm just going to skip them, not worry about it. There's a bunch of regular monsters not worth bothering with. That's one thing that is important if you're farming on players one. I would generally skip a lot of the non-champions and boss packs because the odds of you dropping something good, like a high rune from uh, players one difficulty, is just way, way, way lower. I thought there was a champion there, there was not, but that's okay. But as you teleport around in here, 
And if you didn't know, Ancient Tunnels is specifically known for being great for a Blizzard Sorceress. That's why a ton of people do farm down in the Ancient Tunnels. Alright, I hope you stuck around to the end here because this is the most important part. Probably this is going to be the absolute important tips when you're farming by yourself. It's not necessarily the same as when you're farming in full games. When you're in full games with a higher player's difficulty, you want to kill all the monsters as fast as you can because really with a higher player difficulty, that will increase your chances of getting high runes and high runes are an incredibly amount of value. You can trade those for other good items that you need. Now, when you're farming by yourself, you're generally not targeting to find high runes. Really, you're hunting the actual unique items. Maybe trade rare unique items for the rare, the incredibly uncommon unique items that you're looking for. So that's gonna be the kind of the three biggest tips. You wanna almost exclusively target champions and boss packs and kind of skip over the generic monsters because on players one difficulty, you're not gonna have the better chance of finding high runes like you are on players seven and players eight difficulty. Now you wanna prioritize the speed at which you go through the game. So that's gonna be faster walk run, faster cast rate if you're teleporting and doing areas that are incredibly easy to read or are completely static that you can get to that location. And then you're gonna to wanna to prioritize magic find over the plus skills gear necessarily because when you're on players one, the monsters are so much more weaker than they are on players seven, players eight. Actually having the more magic find will actually be more beneficial because you can kill them in one or two seconds, no matter how much damage your output. One last tip when you're farming solo online, I do want to re recommend you do see a ton of people doing 100 Andarial runs, 100 runs to ancient tunnels. In general, if you are farming for good items by yourself online, that is not what you want to do. That is a good way to literally drive yourself insane. If you're going to be playing online by yourself, I would recommend taking maybe your four or five favorite places or the ones that are fastest for you to farm good items and go ahead and do those back to back to back in a game then maybe jump and create a new game don't necessarily just run the same place driving your head into the ground over and over again so i hope you use these locations and you get out there and find some absolutely godly items hey if you do hit that like button for me and make sure you subscribe up so you never miss any of the Diablo 2 resurrected content and so you don't miss my live streams here right here on this youtube channel peace out youtube hopefully i catch you the next video hey guys don't forget Keep slaying. Ooh.